Hey guys, it's Sam here. Happy Wednesday. How is your day going? Middle of the week, on our way to a different MCO. Mm. I think they're still working things out, but hopefully, hopefully soon. So, how are you doing? How are you today? Mm? So today, we are going to talk about cafes. Mm, things to eat, or not eat. Yes, special kind of cafes. But first, of course, the daily language lesson. So, what does this phrase mean? While you are deciphering it, I will tell you a bit of background. So, say you are a traveler in a foreign country. Right? Once you get some random locals' attention, what, do, what would you say to them? What would you need to say to them? Right? So, say you are in Korea, and you know, unfortunately, you don't remember much of those Korean lessons. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, your uh, your Hangul vocab is isn't quite there. So, what do you do? What do you say? Okay. So, if you're going to remember any phrase, at least try to remember this one, because this will help you get somewhere. Not just anywhere, right? But where where you really desperately need to be, because it's not a place. It is okay. Let's read it. It is Yong. Haseyo, it's a question. Yongo haseyo. Okay, and what question is that? You wanna take a guess? Take a stab. The question is, do you speak English? Yongo is English. Okay, Ingwen. Ingwen. Okay, Yongo haseyo. Do you speak English? Okay, so uh, either they'll, you know, they'll give you some funny response, which probably means no, or they'll start jabbering to you in English. In which case, jackpot, okay, you found someone who can speak the uh, universal language for now, anyway. Right, they can speak English, oh, thank goodness, okay, now you don't have to try and make, get by in broken Korean or whatever, okay. Alright, now, on to the Hokkien one. In Hokkien, it is, E hiao kong eng bun bo? Okay, E hiao kong eng bun bo? Okay, so you don't really need that bo either, it's just a... Okay, so e hiao is can you? E hiao kong kong is speak in Hokkien. Eng bun is English. Ing wen yong o. Eng bun. Okay, and bo is or not. Okay, so uh, really you can you can lose that. You just go e hiao kong eng bun. Okay, but then you know you can, I guess uh, if you were kind of trying to say it properly, I guess you you would add a lu in front maybe. Lu hiao kong o. Lu hiao kong eng bun. So e hiao kong eng bun bo, or really if you can't remember any of that, just remember eng bun eng bun eng bun e hiao eng bun. Yeah, so they'll be like, yeah, okay, I, I I get what you're trying to trying to get at. You know, you're asking me, can I speak English? Well, of course I can, but do I want to speak English? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's generally the attitude with uh, some of these, uh, you know, upper class countries. They're like. Uh, I ain't speaking your silly language. My language is superior. Right? Like, you know, French. Or Thai. Or Singlish. Yeah, the Singaporeans. They're like, oh, my Singlish is better than your English. Ugh. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. It's all good. We are all friends. Friends. Right? Lock that home. For now. Okay, so... There you go. E hiao kong, eng bun bo. Okay, and then they will go. Oh, e hiao, e hiao. Can I speak? Or oh, mm, be hiao, be hiao. You know, I think you. You know, if they start shaking their head, then yeah, I think you have a good idea. Okay, rightio. So, as you know, cafes. There are many, many types of cafes with many, many different themes and ideas, and of course, the recent trend, recent being you know, the past couple of years, has been. These cafes, okay. Now, if you've been living under some huge ass rock that has no social media, then maybe you haven't heard. But um, it is very, very popular in at least a lot of Asian countries to have these things called pet cafes. Okay, so they started off with dogs, standard dogs, cats, right? And they started getting a bit, a little bit crazier. Okay, crazier. But yes, but definitely dog cafes are way up there. You know. So this one is in Malaysia, I think. Slangor. This is China. Dog cafes. 
lovely stuff. Love them. Everybody loves them. They're the best. Okay. So you can't go wrong. So anyway, I'll share with you a story. So a couple, a couple goes for a meal, right? At at one of these uh, you know, restaurants. It's a Chinese one. Okay, it's a Chinese pet cafe. Okay, and they sit down and they're like. Ooh, what should we order? Huh, let's be funny. Let's order the chicken surprise. Yeah, chicken surprise. It's very, it's very American dish, isn't it? Chicken surprise. Okay. Anyway, so the waiter brings them the dish, which is served in a large, lidded cast iron pot. So it's a big pot, bunk with a lid. You know, fancy metal lid. Okay. So as the wife is about to pop it open and start serving herself, the lid pops up by itself, <gasps> and she sees two black, beady little eyes staring back at her from under the lid so she's like ah! you know and then the lid goes back down Poop. all right and the husband's like what what's wrong and she's like did, did you see that did you did you see that so he hadn't because you know, he's, he's got other things to look at so he's so she's like look look in the pot go there's, there's something in there so he's like oh fine you crazy crazy lady so he he reaches over and he and just as he's about to lift the lid the lid goes up by itself and he sees two black beady little eyes staring at him from under and he's like Whoa! and then the lid goes back down Boop. okay so clearly he's a little shocked now they're both a little shocked so he so he calls over the waiter he's like waiter waiter I demand an explanation and the waiter comes over yes monsieur how, how can I help you and uh, so the, 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 the guy the husband this explains he's like what the hell the lid came up by itself and there's like something alive in there what, what is this and he's like and uh, Monsieur, uh, what did you order? And the husband replies, "Well, I ordered the chicken surprise." Oh, uh, oh, oh! Uh, and so the waiter checks his uh, his order list. He's like, "Oh, so sorry, everybody, but I brought you the picking duck." You get it? You get it? There's a live duck in there. Picking, picking? No. Okay. Anyway, so speaking of ducks. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a. See that in the back? You know who that is? That's Sai Duck. Sai. Okay, so this is the new trend. It is a duck cafe. Okay, not just any duck cafe. It's the cute duck club. Okay, so it was. Uh, it's opened in Chengdu, in China. Okay, and uh, it's, you know, it's it's all over all over the webs at the moment because you know come on look at that cute duxies all right let's let's uh, show you video format there you go look at that look at that live ducks real ducks fake ducks they got them all but yes no not for eating so you would think that you know ducks generally if you think about them they're a little snappy but these these guys apparently are pretty cute and they're not too big and apparently they have nice Fluffy, fluffy fur. Yep. Um, yeah, whatever. It's random people. So yes, this is the cafe in China, and they got ducks, and yeah, they definitely have very, very tough working conditions. I mean, look, you can step on them. Step on them. Okay. So uh, yeah, this is this is the owner. Um, she started off with a cat cafe, and now she has started a duck cafe. Okay. So there you are. A nice little, nice little cafe. Pretty cool, huh? So, yeah, any day now, any day now, we're gonna have one locally. It's just perfect, you know. All over social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Snapchat. <laughs> okay. Yes. It's, you know, cause ducks snappy, snap, snap, snap. Yes, perfect. Okay. So yes, apparently there are over three hundred of these. Pet cafes, not ducks. Pet cafes. Okay, so most of them are probably dog cats. Um, but yeah, you know these ducks are you know lovely to pet. They look quite friendly. They have been described as vivacious and interactive. Yes, I don't know why I sound like I don't know Trump there. Anyway, uh, yes, and they're very photogenic, as you can tell. So, yes, photos. Hey, wasn't that that chicken? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So they start off with two, and I think they got like six now. And it's not just it's not just ducks; they also have other fun animals like pigs. Yeah, so pigs are also, are also uh, quite high on the list because you know they're they're 
quite cute, and pretty sociable, clever. Um, yeah. So that brings me to the question: Is it ethical to have a pet cafe? Right? Because I'm sure you know in those you know uptight first world politically correct countries you know those animal rights activists will be like oh no you're exploiting these poor animals you're abusing them you know but you know i, I think clearly you know all these all these animals they, they seem they seem for the most part to be quite all right so uh you know yeah dogs dogs definitely they're like oh yes more people more treats more people more treats um you know i'm sure at some point they get tired um but you know and cats will be like on the fence they'll be like yeah, whatever. You know, I get I get pets, but I really want to sleep. I'm just gonna sleep. I'm just gonna sleep now. Anywhere, wherever. All right. Um, so, but to be honest, I think it really comes down to it depends on the animal, because uh, your dogs and cats are fairly sociable animals. You know, they they're cool. Um, so uh, there have been people who have voiced out about these guys, so like hedgehogs. So uh, the owner just now who ran that duck cafe, yeah. So she is thinking about starting. Uh, a hedgehog cafe. All right, that's that's what she says. She's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna open my next one is gonna be an African pygmy hedgehog cafe, which be as popular as these call ducks. Uh, yes, that's right. These guys, these guys, they they call ducks. You know, like like call girls, call ducks. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. Think it's just a weird translation, or they actually call them that. Call ducks. Hmm. I wonder where the term came from. Anyway, back to the hedgehogs. So hedgehogs are nocturnal. Firstly. Okay, so they they come awake at night, right? Because they're generally a uh, you know they're they're wild and they're a prey animal. Okay, so like rabbits, okay, they they are generally more timid, shy. They keep to themselves, and they you know obviously they don't like being manhandled. They're not they're not that open to humans. But apparently some of them you know are are fairly accepting. Okay, but the main fact is that they want to sleep. Okay, because you know during the day when we're awake they want to sleep. Okay, uh, so yeah, in those cases, me, 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 maybe, maybe uh, not, not so great. Uh, rabbits as well. Rabbits are generally actually, you know, they're they're not they're not a big fan of of like a lot of people rushing at them because you know instinctively they're like, ah, my God, they're gonna eat me. So yes, rabbits also. Mm, uh, it's quite stressful on the rabbit apparently, you know, to especially if you you're gonna be manhandled by strangers all the time. Uh, but yeah, you know, they are they are social creatures. I think they prefer socializing with their own species. Yeah. So again, your know, animals and owls, general, the same. You know, owl, owls are nocturnal for starters, uh, and I don't think they enjoy being pet. You know, but of course, you know, we, we can't we can't know for sure. But still, I'm not saying you know we should open up pet cafes of of all sorts of varieties. Just you know, just keep an eye on the animals. So again, with the, with the ducks, who knows? Will the ducks? Prove to be a successful pet ca- uh, pet cafe idea, or is it just a fad? You know, uh, they're gonna burn out after a while. They'll be like, "Oh my god, kill me now! Oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to be pet anymore. You know, just eat me, eat me." Yes. Um. Yeah, cause I, uh, you know, the whole the whole pet cafe idea is, I think it's it's not all that bad. I'm I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. Um, so long as the animals are, you know, treated, treated well, taken care of, right? And you know, it's not a, it's not a shock to their system. So you know, dog cafes, cat cafes, yeah, sure, you know, go go for it. Um, because they started back in uh, Japan, I think, uh, f- as a way for a lot of um, a lot of younger folk, a lot of city dwellers, to experience, you know, interacting with animals. Because you know, in in big urban cities concrete jungles like you know tokyo you know those capital cities where everyone lives in a tiny apartment you know you can't afford or, and you you don't have space to take care of an animal you probably don't have time either because you're working but uh the the main the matter of fact is that it's harder to take care of a pet on your own so that's why these cafes are proving to be quite popular uh, because it allows people to interact with animals uh, while not being burdened with ownership right you just come and play with them and then go home. Is that perfect? Is that perfect? Yes, right. And you know, you have a drink. You support these uh, these places. Um, and yeah, hey, you know, I'm sure they can partner with like shelters. Uh, so there there has been ideas. Uh, like I read an article about a uh, like a dog hotel that 
it's, well, it's not really a dog hotel. It's like a, it's a dog hotel, but not for dogs. The dogs are always there. It's a hotel for humans. Okay, so you book into the hotel, and you know instead of going out and about and exploring, you stay there and you take care of the dog, a dog, right? That's kind of cool idea, right? So uh, yeah, it's, a, it's like I'm, some people might find that therapeutic. You know, it's a holiday. You know, you go there for a week, spend some time with the dog. You know, take them for walks, feed them, play with them, and then yeah, you go home. Right? So it might be a new wave of uh, tourism ideas. Right? So cafes are you know very sh very short term, and then you have a slightly longer term one, which is uh, you know you have uh, you get to stay with the animals, and uh, you know it's uh, it's like those you know those prisoner rehab programs. Uh, so they they have been proven quite successful. You know where they get um, prisoners to uh, train and take care of dogs and cats. So it's you know it's a win-win situation kind of thing, you know, prisoners uh, get to uh, get to interact with animals and you know develop that softer loving side of them, and the animals get trained and taken care of, yeah, you know, and uh, it's just, I think it's just uh, it's just all round great idea, great great idea, okay, okay I think that's all for me. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are on the pet cafes. You're like, ugh gross, it's dirty, they poop everywhere, smelly, you know, whatever, that, that's fine. Um, I imagine the ducks are probably probably a little bit less less messy than dogs and cats. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can toilet train them, that's a good question, maybe you can. Um, you know, whereas dogs and cats, yeah, you can, you can certainly toilet train them, although I've been in the dog cafes, I've seen, I've seen those dogs, they just, they just go, man, they just go wherever. Yuck. So yeah, and if you haven't, if you're still under that, that rock, maybe maybe go check out one of them. Uh, we have some locally, definitely. Um, dogs, cats. Oh, hey, anyone, anyone of you have a socially trained duck? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or I don't know, some animals like, uh, what, what are popular ones? Sugar gliders, hey, there you go. But they seem kind of fragile. I know you, you need you need to strike a balance. You know you need something that's that's that can withstand uh, you know a reasonable amount of you know people like manhandling them. You know with sugar gliders they seem kind of fragile. You know you get like one of those like chubby little kids be like oh my god it's so cute I want to grab it I want to grab it and you know and they just squeeze the life out of the damn thing. You know and they bang and then your, your sugar glider is dead. You know, at least with these ducks, you know, I'm sure they'll, if you if you squeeze them a little too hard, they'll honk, honk, and they'll snap you. Oh no, sorry, those are geese. Yeah, no, definitely, you don't want a geese cafe, okay, because geese are aggressive, bloody aggressive geese. They'll chase you. Yeah, that's what I thought about ducks. I thought, you know, generally ducks are like a little bit snappy, snap, 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 snap. but, yeah, you know, I'm sure you can, if you're, if you're brought up, if they're trained with, uh, you know, to be in the presence of humans, yeah, I'm sure they'll be fine. Are uh, yes, yeah, but yeah, I guess time will tell whether this whether ducks are suitable as pets and suitable as pet cafe animals, um, but yeah, there's uh, there's there's a couple in Thailand I think that that have like really wacky ones. Are they near? No, uh, there's there's one in Thailand that they have got meerkats. That's right, meerkats. Fish, come on, a fish fish cafe. That's that's just like opening a cafe in an aquarium. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Ooh, I should go talk to like Do Tian Yang. Yeah, right. It's just like uh, I mean, what? What are you going to stick your hand in there? Right? It's just it's just like an aquarium. It's, except you know you can sit and watch. Actually, that hmm, that doesn't seem like too bad an idea, because you know the like you don't you're not worried about people like manhandling a fish, right? Because they're just they're just gonna sit there and watch the fish swim, and they can sit next to it and sip their coffee and tea, right? N not like these other animals where people expect to be able to you know touch them, stroke them, right? Fish, you know, who's, really who's gonna touch fish? Okay, maybe I will be proven wrong. People, I'm sure people want to grope fish. Yeah, get a feel for that, like reptiles. Have you ever felt a snake? Mm -hmm. I actually feel quite nice. Okay, anyway, enough jibber jabber from me. I uh, hope you have a good one. Hopefully, all things go well and we can, you know, get back to the business of opening up more pet cafes. Mm. Or you know whatever business you want to do, because at this at this point in time it's a little hard to start anything. Okay, so yep. But in the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy, 
and I'll check in on you guys another time. Okay, Sam out. Da um emboa.